a spree Where mysteries and terror be And darkness comes for you and me Join us on a slasher spree There's no place to hide And soon you'll see Siblings on a slasher spree Welcome back to another episode of Slasher Siblings. We have a great lineup today prepared for you, boils and ghouls. No, we sure do. So today we'll be discussing our review of the Haunted Hallow Scream Park and Rose's Farm. Uh, our first oddity as well, and the origins of our obsession with collecting the weird and wonderful. And if that wasn't enough, we finally discussed the siblings going viral on TikTok with special guest, viral video fan favorite, Brian Hurricane Curry, a.k.a. Papa Slasher. Bow, 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 bow. Do we have to do that sound every time we say Papa Slasher? Uh, bow, 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 bow. Seems like any time we say anything of importance, but... <laughs> so good. <laughs> I'm actually very excited to hear about his experience with making the video and what it's like trying to evade a butcher knife wielding Michael Myers while in an electric wheelchair. It will be a unique perspective. So stay <laughs> tuned. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start with Rose's farm. One word, poutine. Uh. Uh. So Rose's uh, is famous i don't even know if that's the correct correct term but is famous for their poutine and i assure you it does not disappoint uh they farm the potatoes themselves uh they're fresh cut and fried on the spot the cheese is perfect the gravy oh my god it is so tasty mm. the fries are so crispy on the outside oh and this delicious potato pillow on the inside uh, they hold their shape and their crispiness under the gravy. And just when you don't think it can get any better, they offer you fresh cooked bacon bits to top it all off. <sighs> I'm feeling flustered. <laughs> okay, me too. Uh, I think that was probably the most descriptive I've ever heard a poutine be described. You know, you can't like, like I can, I can smell it. Ugh. Yeah. You provided all of the senses there and bacon <laughs> alone always gets me those like warm and fuzzy feelings. So, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, Rose's is located less than five minutes from my house in Mount Albert, which I love. It is both convenient, but also dangerous, i.e. the delicious poutine. Mm -hmm. um, so you and I went with our significant others and my dog, Cornelius. I love that it is a dog friendly um, place because I'm obnoxious and like to bring my dog everywhere. So that was a huge plus. Uh, so we went to have a tasty poutine lunch and just check out their fall activities. Uh, they had a really cute photo op spot set up where we took a bunch of pictures. Uh, they were also offering a tractor ride back into the pumpkin patch, which was huge. Like the pumpkin patch was huge and a really mm. great corn maze. Yeah, and it was it was great because we had plenty of time to go and pick a pumpkin, which was such a cool aspect of this. Uh, plenty of time to have fun in the maze and take mm -hmm. some pictures. Uh, all of the activities were definitely geared towards families with young kids. Oh my um, God, when we asked if we could go on the tractor ride and they're like, oh, how many kids? And we're like, none. none. <laughs> Four adults, please. <laughs> and then they had the audacity to be like, oh, I, I don't think you can go if you don't have any children. I so know. we went full Halloween Karen and demanded to speak to the manager and the <laughs> oh entire production. Uh, no, they were actually super nice about it yeah. and uh, did yeah. finally tell us that we were allowed to take the children's tractor ride. So we were all very happy about that. <laughs> uh, at the main farm, they also have this huge play place. So think McDonald's play place, but like five times the size. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have a package where you get a pass to the play place and then the tractor ride slash pumpkin patch. Uh, oh, and they also had the hay castle built at the pumpkin patch for the kids. So cute. It was such mm -hmm. a great outdoor venue. And I absolutely loved the butter tarts. Yes, yes. So that's right. So they have uh, a little market there as well where you can buy potatoes and sweets and jams and just, mm. oh, I just love it so much. It's just the cutest place and the poutine is delicious and everything. Love, 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 love. 
Agreed. Thank you so much, Rose's Farm, for having us. We will definitely be back next year. A hundred percent. I mean, yeah. I'm going to be back probably next <laughs> week just to eat the poutine. But as far as the fall festivals go, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will return next year for our tractor ride and pumpkin picking. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, well, let's move on and discuss our experience at Haunted Hallow Scream Park. Good evening, viewers. Creepy Charlie here at Haunted Hollows, here with the Slasher siblings. <laughs> Hope you enjoy their review. <laughs> that was so neat. Thank you, Creepy Charlie, for our first official shout out. For those of you that aren't familiar with this particular haunt, it's located at 18444 Young Street in East Willembury. It's Newmarket, essentially. Uh, it's been running for several years. I don't know how long it's been running. I looked, I tried to look on the website, but I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. So if you're listening to this, then let us know, Haunted Hallows, how long mm. you've been in business. Uh, it is two and a half acres. You should note, though, that it's not recommended for children under 12, anyone who is easily frightened, uh, and then the the standard warnings as far as heart conditions, uh, or if you're epileptic, they do have strobes, that sort of thing. It's also all outside, so the terrain can be a little rough. Um, I don't even know if rough is maybe uneasy. Yeah. Is, is, is maybe a, a more appropriate description of that. But uh, yeah, fog machines, spinning vortex tunnel, loud noises, lots of, of different like lighting effects. So like I said, take that into consideration uh, and visit at your own discretion. At Haunted Hallows, you step into a world where Halloween's essence is not just celebrated, but lived. Haunted Hallows is no ordinary scream park. It's a mm -hmm. masterfully curated realm of horror. They've sculpted. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> that Thank you sounded, for that. The effect sounded appropriate for that spot. Go. It did, and it, it worked <laughs> for me. They have sculpted every inch of their sprawling woods to echo mm -hmm. the very spirit of Halloween. They feature incredibly detailed haunt rooms, meticulously crafted props, and professional live actors all converging to transport you into tales of terror making every visit an experience to remember. It's so good. Every prop, every actor, every room at Haunted Hallows is dedicated, and I mean dedicated, to giving you a mesmerizing, spine-chilling experience. Beyond just scares, it's about really immersing you in an environment where Halloween reigns supreme. Prepare to be amazed, frightened, and utterly entranced mm -hmm. whether you're a diehard halloween fan uh you know very serious horror aficionado or you're just seeking a unique thrill haunted hallows is most definitely the place to be this halloween season uh ain't that the truth and we've been going there for the past three to four years i believe and it impresses us every damn time Yes. They always add and like tweak things each year. So there's always something new to see, but they also lean like well into their strengths and keep the quality of the experience consistent, which mm -hmm. I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Now, Kristen, this haunt is closest to you geographically. So tell us how you found it and why we continue to go back. So I found it haphazardly. Um, it is a route that I drive by somewhat often when I'm going to Michael's to do some Halloween shopping. <laughs> um, and they had a sign out the front, one of the big uh, skeletons. And I thought, obviously, I Googled it. It looked incredible. I said, hey, Randy, let's check this out and maybe eat a tasty burger before we go. And so that's exactly what we did. And we continue to go back year after year. Like what you said, Randy, they change things each year but they also keep certain things not even say the same but similar and you're actually excited to see those things right like dr satan they have every year and i'm excited to see him every mm. year he just mm -hmm. looks fantastic the guy at the front entrance uh he's like a zombie of sorts i want to say 
and he hinges forward and then comes back up like he drops forward hard to explain uh i love it It, it's just it's so good yeah i agree especially for such an outskirts location it is really impressive Mm -hmm. Um, there's definitely nothing like it within the gta Uh, let's focus on our experience this time around I do feel compelled to mention that the lineup to get in can be very long. I think Mm -hmm. we waited about an hour to get in. About that. About that, yeah. We had purchased uh, general passes, and if the weather cooperates, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. That said, they do offer VIP passes uh, slash add-ons for an additional $25 that, in retrospect, I probably would have paid to bypass the line. Unfortunately, in the moment, Randy is hella frugal. Cheap. Not frugal. Cheap. You're very cheap. I am frugal, and there is a difference. (laughs) However, that said, retrospective Randy would make it rain like a cash gun at a strip club, so decide how much your time is worth before you go and just make a judgment call. Mm -hmm. That's, That's fair advice, for sure. Again, it was a beautiful night when we went also, so it was sort of like, all yeah. good, right? Um, the standouts for me this year definitely was the guy with the electric poker who was running it along a fence. So it was spark. So good. It really worked for me. <laughs> definitely going to try and figure that out for future Halloweens. Yeah, Maybe I love that for us. Halloween. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit up Eric, our neighbor, who's fantastic at all things mechanical and I'm going to make him help me. He's used to that. (laughs) So as I mentioned before, Dr. Satan from Rob Zombie's house of a thousand corpses. I just, I love him. I look forward to seeing him every year. Um, I wish I had him in my collection, but he is definitely looking more handmade versus like purchased as a prop kind of thing. Mm. Well, and let's not forget about the field of crawling Napoleons. It felt like we rolled up on a family reunion. (laughs) Yes, such a good setup. They have Napoleons standing. They have him crawling. They have just, uh, it's so good. It looks so great with their lighting and, and everything. Randy, tell us what stood out for you this year. Okay, so like you just mentioned, uh, the guy with the zombie rig attached to his waist, but it was also a puppet that he controlled. Oh, I was talking about a different zombie guy. A different zombie guy? So you were talking about like the puppet one? No, no, no. I was talking about the one at the very front entrance. Like you have to almost like look up onto the roof. Oh. And he like, hin- like, he, like drops forward and then rises back up. That oh guy. my gosh. Yes, I love him too. But no. He's this- so good specifically yeah. i'm talking about the the mechanical it was like a rig it was basically like yes i think what's a famous puppet <laughs> i just go to muppets i don't know okay don't know. Yeah. You know so it's like it's like a muppet that's looking like it's eating your face but mm-hmm. you puppeteer it anyway it was super yes. effective he like yes. attacked the cars Mm-hmm. As they pulled in, which was really awesome. Yep. Uh, the other thing that stood out for me was the doll room, which was fantastic. We all know I'm obsessed with dolls, especially spooky mm-hmm. dolls. Well, only spooky dolls. Uh, yeah. I wanted to adopt them all. Avi. Avi. The witch's <laughs> cabin, okay, was also mm. another standout for me. Uh, the scene set up. It's just, it's so well thought out and it's executed yeah. beautifully. It's literally like walking into a witch's cabin like it didn't even feel like yeah and the witch's cabin is actually one of few places uh where a jump scare got me because Mm. the witch was such like a tiny little person Mm -hmm. like I didn't I didn't think she was real because she wasn't like a standard like five foot three kind of thing but she wasn't a kid it was she scared me (laughs) <laughs> so aside from the small little witch that scared you, uh, the snake room also made you super uncomfortable. Uh, you know what, though? I was thinking about it and looking back on it. I'm like, is this what people feel like going through haunted houses normally? 
Mm. Right? Because the usual stuff doesn't scare me. Like I hear a chainsaw and I get excited. Right? Like I'm like, oh, chainsaw scene. Or I, I don't think most people enjoy that sound. Uh, so they had this little, it wasn't, I don't even know if I would consider it a room. Um, Cause it was very, it was quite small. But oh, it had snakes that jumped at you. And no, I didn't like it. I hate snakes. I hate them. I did not enjoy that room. Hard pass. Aside from that, I really enjoyed playing our own little version of Spot the Prop because Leo and I absolutely owned several of the items that we saw from that haunt. Yeah, which doesn't surprise me in the slightest. <laughs> the funeral home room. Ugh. And the butcher shop also gave me some serious Halloween ideas. They also added a small carnival setup this year, which was really cute. But I do feel my only critique is that it should have been included in the general admission. Mm. This was an add-on that you could opt in for. But maybe in the future, if they could expand it a little bit, I feel like it would make more sense for like a, an added pay option. Because it would have been fun as you exit. It was at the exit of the the haunt you know if you could if you could just play a couple a couple games i thought that would have been really fun but i didn't necessarily see the value in the uh, price add-on yeah i think i concur with that mm -hmm. and i'm sorry haunted hallows but i am about to put you on blast because where was the skeleton on the tricycle <sighs> Was my okay, so favorite. I'll paint you. Yeah, I'll paint you a bit of a picture here, because uh, obviously you have no idea what I'm talking about. So <laughs> last year and the year before, if I'm not mistaken, they had mm -hmm. this life size skeleton. Okay, that would drive around the parking lot area on a tricycle, and he was remote controlled, and had a speaker mm -hmm. so he could talk to you in real time. So just picture this like <laughs> plastic skeleton. Almost, riding almost like saw like, right? Like the little buddy on the on the tricycle. Yes, but instead but of him, think yes, but way skeleton. cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Plastic skeleton. And he yeah. just looked so fun. Like I don't know where he was this year. I thoroughly missed him. Like I, I was genuinely disappointed when he mm -hmm. was not there. Mm -hmm. Um and he was awesome. So please bring him back. I don't know if he was like out for repairs or if he needed to have a, a bone repaired or <laughs> I don't I don't know. Just bring him back, please. Yes. Agreed. I really did love him. And I'm actually I can I can picture the picture of us with him last year because we posed for a picture. He was awesome. We loved. Him. Oh, yes. Uh, so we were going to provide a review of The Haunting of Hexwood as well this week, but due to some issues uh, with some city permits, I guess, uh, they weren't able to open on time. They are open now, so we're going to go see them later in October. We will share a review of that in a future episode. And I think that concludes the, the haunt portion mm -hmm. of our episode. Uh, so... Now let's talk about our first oddity. Oh, finally. Wee! So when we were discussing this for the show, it was hard for us to pin down exactly what the first oddity was. Randy, what did you, because we were having, I remember we were having this conversation last weekend. What did you finally land on as your first oddity? Yeah, so this was really difficult to actually think about because I think at least specifically my oddity collection exploded so quickly that it was hard for me to really pin down. So I kept trying to go back mm -hmm. and look at pictures of like my old apartments and see if I could pick anything out that mm -hmm. seemed oddity like. Uh, I think that what I had to settle on was something I bought that I didn't consider a full out oddity at the time, but is very on theme. So I'm going to go with it. Uh, it was actually a hand-carved buffalo skull, including the antlers. And I don't mean that the skull had the antlers with them. I mean the antlers were also hand-carved uh, from Indonesia. And the oh, carvings... Right! Yeah, right? So the carvings are of human skulls, and it really is a piece of art. And mm -hmm. I say that because of how expensive it was. <laughs> you can actually check out similar items by visiting www.skullbliss.com. Uh, it actually hangs over my bed in the master bedroom. And I think it 
like ignited my fascination with owning like real animal and shortly thereafter human skulls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll post a picture to Instagram that you can check out as well. Kristen, what started this obsession for you? Again, same thing. I was racking my brain trying to figure out. I mean, we've always been like into this sort of thing, right? But we had never mm -hmm. collected anything. I mean, other than like pogs and crazy bones. <laughs> I recall <laughs> us collecting those. But I would say my first oddity was a raccoon skull. I'm still not entirely sure what it is, but I've Google imaged it and it appears to be a raccoon skull. So we were, we used to walk in a park in Scarborough. Uh, it was sort of like a ravine area. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. I was out for a walk uh, with Leo and Cornelius and Dodger at the time. And we happened upon, or the, I think the dogs happened upon this mess of what used to be an animal. So of course I shooed them away. But the skull was entirely intact and I would say 90% rid of skin and flesh and all of the jazz. So it right. was almost just the skull. So naturally I was like, well, I'm going to take this home. So <laughs> I... <laughs> As one would. Yeah, exactly. So I had poop bags because everybody should be cleaning up after their dogs biggest pet peeve so I had poop bags in my pocket scooped up the the skull like it was a yucky yucky poop and took it home <laughs> I then googled how to clean a skull it told me laundry detergent and I tried a bunch of different things nothing really worked kept googling kept you know researching and it said to boil it I was like Meh. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Well, you have to remember this because it was both hilarious and terrifying. I'm I'm convinced I was there. Was oh, I you were there, there for this? Yeah. You, okay. I was going to say, I yeah, distinctly you weren't there for the retrieval. remember. You weren't there for the retrieval poop bag scene, but you were there for the boiling. So. Right. I was there for the reveal and boil. <laughs> yeah. So we got a massive, like, pasta pot i don't it was a huge pot anyways we <laughs> boiled this thing for hours mm -hmm. oh and it was disgusting and it steamed up every like you know when you you boil something and it it does like condensation everywhere <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> boiled raccoon head condensation on all of my kitchen cupboards it was awful we no longer <laughs> live there <laughs> so, um but yeah so that's that's what we did we eventually got it clean i i i think we just kept boiling it until it was clean and then i bleached it and then i made like a little display with it mm -hmm. it's very cute it, it is the very first oddity that I got and made. I mean, I you know what I mean? Put it together in, in like a nice display myself versus now I've purchased things that have already been displayed. Right? Yes. So it was a very DIY. And it's funny now because I look online and you see, you see, you know, animal skulls for sale or whatever. They're <laughs> like $25. <laughs> <laughs> about They're not expensive. <laughs> I ruined my kitchen cupboards. I threw out a very expensive pasta pot. Like it, it just. Well, that was my <laughs> going to be my question was how much was this pot that we destroyed? And yeah. did we actually get rid of it or did we save it for future boilings? I believe I did save it for future boilings. And then again, through my Google search, I was like $25 to just buy one already clean. Oh, okay. I was really and worried where you were going with that. Oh, well, I thought you were going to be like, oh, yeah, like we saved it. And then, you oh, know, then I got, <laughs> yeah, I got mixed up in the move. And <laughs> no. I hope you're still coming over for pasta on Friday. <laughs> no, 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 it is. It has been tossed. It has been tossed. But yeah, so that was that was my very first oddity. That's good. And you know what? I actually love how organic and DIY that story was, because typically that's something people would not be inclined to do for their first apparently google is you know a wonderful mean? thing though it is it so is it has done it us gave well me confidence 
Uh, yeah. So, oh, actually, the one thing I did want to talk about before we move on uh, oh, yeah. is that I actually have a follow up from the date I was talking about on the last episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it turns out my details were slightly askew in that that they were mostly incorrect. So <laughs> allow me to tell you exactly what happened. Uh, so Christina and Bob actually met on Bumble. This was their fifth date, and it was actually Christina's idea. It wasn't Bob's idea. Womp womp. Uh, they also adamantly do not want children, so we would like to apologize for suggesting you become impregnated. Yes, I I do apologize. <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> the best part of this story, though, is that Bob loved how excited Christina got over this antique abortion tool at the store. So he bought it for her, and now it's hanging on her wall at home. It's exactly the kind of romantic story that I love to tell around here. Mm -hmm. So precious. I love. So precious. All the butchery best to you, Bob and Christina. <laughs> Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the slasher siblings go viral. <laughs> and joining us to discuss this epic milestone is none other than Papa Slasher Brian Hurricane Curry. Yes, welcome to the show, and thank you for being our very first guest. Well, thank you for having me. I had to move a lot of stuff around now that I've become famous and all. Oh, good Lord, what have we done? <laughs> I think we have created a monster, but I am so here for it. Brian, tell us how you felt while filming this TikTok trend. Uh, I kind of felt um, happy at first, and then I got sad, and then I got happy all over again. So... With that being said, um, I was happy that obviously we were all together and doing our Thanksgiving thing. And I was asked to uh, be part of um, all of this. And I got sad because I had to watch everything. And my uh, mama slasher, sandwich maker, um, <laughs> got killed. And um, the only thing I could think of was who's going to make my next sandwich? <laughs> There you go. There you go. Uh, did you ever think it would have exploded like it did? Um, I wasn't really too sure what to expect, you know, being um, old and whatnot. I'm not <laughs> all that up on the um, what happens on all these media things. But I was quite, um, quite impressed that um, everything was like just unreal. Awesome. And what did it feel like to know now millions of people have uh, watched you and really rooted for you? Well, it, it feels it feels absolutely great. Um, I've never really thought it would get over the 3.5 million reviews, um, not to mention over 1,400 comments. Um, it's it's been it's been a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the and the support for you and Mama Slasher in the comments were just awesome to see. Oh, uh, they were unbelievable. Some of them even like made me cry, like from <laughs> laughing so hard. Um, it was really nice to see how many uh, great people there are still out there that um, decided to have fun with us. That's mm -hmm. so wholesome. So, okay, so <laughs> what do you plan to do with this newfound internet fame? Well, I've been practicing uh, my signature because, uh, <laughs> you know, it's very difficult to even get from the house to my car with all these people. Without and, the paparazzi? Uh, <laughs> it's a paparazzi all over again. But uh, outside of that, uh, my signature is coming along. And um, when things settle down a little bit, I'm... I'm looking at uh, getting myself an agent, maybe. <laughs> okay. Oh, geez. Well, thank you. I, I mean, I, I wish you all the best in your agent hunt. Um, and thank you so much for carving out some time in your very, very hectic schedule to be here with us. Yeah, I think we both look forward to some future collaborations. Well, I'd just like to thank <laughs> both of you and um, all of your fans for making this a fun time. Amazing. Thanks, Papa Slasher. 
Thanks, Papa. See you around. As the coffin closes on our third episode, I'm going to give Randy the opportunity to shamelessly promote the contest he's trying to win that in the end will benefit us both. Yes. Uh, thank you, Moira Rose from Shits Creek. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what that sounded like? <laughs> it was 100% what that sounded like. Oh, no. Like. <laughs> I love her. Uh, I was here for it. Okay, contest, go. Yes, contest, go. At the beginning of September, I was selected to compete in a competition for a shot to be crowned the face of horror. <laughs> bum, bum, win, bum. <laughs> win 13 grand in cash money. A photo shoot with Kane Hodder at the Woodbury House and a feature in Rumorg Magazine. I've now advanced into the quarterfinals. Woo! And I need all of your help to get me to the finish line. Uh, voting for this round closes October 26th at 11 p.m. So there's still plenty of time to cast your free daily vote. Uh, links are in my slash our bio. So jump over there and show some support. <laughs> Was that an appropriate <laughs> All right, so join us next week where we'll be reviewing the Isabella Street Seance hosted by James White in Toronto. And we're also going to hit up Fear Grounds Haunted Attraction in Uxbridge. And the closest geographically located haunt for me, mm -hmm. Martino Manor in Etobicoke. Mm -hmm. My gut is telling me that that will probably eat up an entire episode, but if it doesn't, We'll be sure to have some other spooky topics on hand. Yay. <laughs> so this has been Kristen. And Randy. Slashing our way into your hearts and nightmares. Happy haunting. Bye, witches. Bye.